U.S. liner companies reinforced composite materials are widely considered to be among the greatest innovations in the truck trailer industry over the last 20 years. Despite their structural integrity, we recognize it's only a matter of time before either damage to the exterior of the trailer or damage to the interior requires repair. USLCO has pioneered yet another patent-pending innovative process that completely restores the bond strength of integral scuff bands that have separated from their wall liners. This video has been created as a step-by-step -step guide to repairing integral wall separation using US Liner's patent-pending weld wire. The tools you'll need are US Liner's patent-pending weld wire, six or more load locks, and they should be adjustable, 2x4s to hold the scuff to the wall during welding, MIG TIG welder with long enough leads to perform the weld, small soldering iron, hand grinder, squirt bottle of water, fire extinguishers just as a safety precaution, handheld butane torch, wire strippers, polypropylene packaging tape, polypropylene weld rod, utility knife. Before you get started, please confirm your welder can operate with a voltage of 158 to 162 volts and an amperage of 50 amps. The first step is evaluating the repair. Determine the length of the separated area. You may have a situation where, because of the type of repair, you need to separate the scuff from the wall using a spade tool as shown. We recommend working in 8-foot sections or less. Once the scuff has been separated from the wall, cut the necessary length of weld wire and strip the protective plastic from the wire ends approximately 2 inches. You can do this with a utility knife, then wire cutters, or use a handheld butane torch to burn the plastic off the wire. Once cool to the touch, twist the wire ends together. Next, using a hand Dremel tool, cut a notch in the scuff approximately one inch from the top on both sides. The spacing of the two notches should match the length of your weld wire plus the two inches of exposed wire on each side. Now place the wire behind the scuff and pull the lead ends through your notched areas. Quick tip. Dremel out your notch with an area large enough to bring two pieces of weld wire through the opening. This way, while you're waiting for the first section to cool, you can immediately set up the next section and repeat the process. Also, you may need to add the polypropylene packaging tape to hold the weld wire to the top of the scuff. Using your 2x4 boards, place the wood directly against the scuff. Secure them using your load locks and then tighten. Verify that all areas are flat, as this will ensure a proper bond. It's very important that the scuff is pressed firmly on the wire and the wall with no gaps, otherwise a solid bond will not take place in that area. Now, attach the welder leads to your exposed weld wire ends. Set the welder to the proper voltage, approximately 162 volts and 50 amps. Turn the welder on. Please note, each welder may vary slightly based on age and size, so these settings are a starting point. If necessary, adjust accordingly. Using a stopwatch, set your timer for one to two minutes. During the weld time, you'll see smoke rising from the scuff. Don't be alarmed. This is simply the plastic parts melting together. After your timer has expired, turn the welding unit off. At this point, you can use your squirt bottle of water to accelerate the cooling process. The final step in the process is to fill the notched areas on the scuff. This can be accomplished by using a polypropylene welding rod and a soldering iron. After heating up the soldering iron, simply apply the polypropylene welding rod to the area and melt together. It's really that simple. No more fasteners, messy adhesives that don't work, or toxic fumes. By simply applying enough heat and pressure, the two sections can be firmly fused back together. For more information, please visit www.uslco.com.